G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen, bon John. Now here we are again in beautiful Rimini, Italy. Now I tell you what, it's about probably 25 degrees Fahrenheit here, but that hasn't stopped droves and droves of people coming. And one of them is right here, come on in Marcos. They love coming to Rimini because this Sea show is one of the biggest ice cream shows in all of the world. Is that not right? I agree, absolutely. Now, <laughs> where exactly are you from and why are you here, Marcus? I am from Sweden because you, 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 you don't have any choice. You need to come into Italy to, to have the real gelato. You don't have any choice? Any choice. Not even where you're from? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, from Marcus and I, we're going to pop inside and eat some gelato. That's what's coming up on this edition of the Ice Cream Bloke. Welcome to Sweden in Stockholm. <laughs> <laughs> G'day ice cream lovers. Now the city of Rimini on the coast of the Adriatic Sea has a population of about 140,000 people and it's one of the most famous seaside resorts in all of Europe. Of course in the middle of winter time there's not too many beachgoers but there are thousands and thousands of people who flock to the Rimini Fiera to come and attend the Seagip show. Now this beautiful building covers about 460,000 square meters and it's linked to other major cities by bus, rail and even a helipad. Now it's going to cost you about 31 euro to come in and see the show but I tell you what it's well worth the price of admission because there are hundreds of booths most of which are dealing with pastry, gelato and ice cream and also gourmet chocolates. There's literally a booth here for every type of gourmet dessert you can think of. Now it's always a challenge to get the ice cream that you have to the masses and the Brazil Expo always comes up with some great and unique ideas to take ice cream to the people. For example, jump on a bike, go and serve some customers. Now if you're down at the beach you may want to have something that's a little bit more robust like this little beauty. Now if you're highfalutin and you've got some top quality ice cream, you don't want to be stuck with an average set of wheels. And there's a set of wheels here for absolutely everyone. Now this trailer will probably set you back a pretty penny, but it's kind of like the transformers of all ice cream carts, and I tell you what, it's sure to turn some heads. Now what does a Ducati motorcycle have to do with selling ice cream? Well, nothing really, but boy, it sure looks good. Now one trend that was very popular and really stood out at this year's show was the amount of stalls that had ice cream bars and pops. Now they literally came in every shape, size, flavour and colour and they were all over the shop. So we decided to spend a little bit of time with one of the companies that makes an ice cream bar maker to get the good oil on how good ice cream bars are made. Now of course as with ice cream every good recipe starts with the basics. A little milk, a little bit of cream and of course sugar which makes up for about 15% of this particular recipe. Give the whole lot a very good thrashing to make sure that the sugar is totally mixed into the mix and now we're over to the moulds. Now ice cream lovers, there's literally hundreds of different types of moulds, all made of stainless steel and all made to produce bulk popsicles. Now once we've scraped off all of the excess mix, it's time to bring out the handy dandy stick holder. Now this contraption is designed to hold all of the sticks in place while the freezing process occurs. Now on most of these types of machines, the ice cream actually goes into either a brine solution and is frozen, or it's a kind of blast freezer that uses forced air to bring these popsicles down to temperature. And most of the processes take around about 10 to 12 minutes. Once the freezing process is finished, the popsicles are dipped in room temperature water just to make sure that the ice cream comes away from the mold easily. And a couple of seconds later, Bob's your uncle. 
you've got a great looking set of vanilla popsicles. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to dip these in chocolate. However, in order to just firm up the ice cream, we're going to pop these in a blast freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now with the magic of television, Wooshka, they're ready to go. Now the great thing about these stick holders is there's a quick release mechanism that allows all of the popsicles to be extracted straight away. Now of course we are in Italy, the fashion capital of the world, and no self-respecting popsicle wants to be underdressed. So a dip in some gourmet Belgian chocolate and some sprinkles will bring us up to fashion with the rest of the crowd. So there you go folks, it's a relatively simple process and it certainly gets the seal of approval from the locals. So keep an eye out for some of these gourmet popsicles and ice cream bars coming to a high-end ice cream store near you. G'day folks, well, we've got an absolute treat for you here behind me is the biggest ice cream cone ever made and it was done here on the first day of the show here in Rimini in Italy. Now, the absolute monster was certified by the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest ice cream cone ever made. Wouldn't you like to get your laughing gear around that little beauty? Now this ice cream cone took gelato makers about 30 hours to create. They've used 160 pounds of chocolate and 2,000 wafers to make this cone 10 feet tall. Now, speaking of the humble ice cream cone, well, it's the quintessential holder of all things ice cream. And there certainly was a great focus on the humble ice cream cone all throughout this year's Rimini show. Now, for the ice cream lover in your family that has absolutely everything, here's the perfect Christmas gift, an ice cream cone dining room set. Now, not to be outdone by his distant cousin, the ice cream cone, the crepes made a good appearance in this year's show as well. And there are a lot of different new ways of making crepes that were exhibited at this year's show. Now, one process that got a lot of attention was this kind of crepe sandwich that was toasted. So you've got a little bit of soft serve in the middle here, two crepes on either side. Looks delicious just as it is. Well, we're not finished yet. Straight into the toaster for about 30 seconds, and you get a nice, crisp, warm ice cream sandwich that's to die for. Then, of course, you've got, well, the gelato. It's the Italian super dessert that's eaten for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all throughout Italy and Europe and they spare no expense and time to make sure that some of these desserts are literally a work of edible art. Now, not to be outdone by the biggest cone in the world, this massive edible sponge cake was put together as a celebration of the 150 years of the unification of Italy as a country. And it was adorned with Belgian chocolate replicas of famous Italian landmarks. This is probably the cheapest bit of Italy you're ever going to get. Hmm, delicioso. Now, if you want any details from the uh, episode this week or any of the information that we've seen at the show, go on to theicecreamblog.com. Thanks, folks. Keep on scooping. We'll see you next time.